Right, now I want to talk to you about Vista, Microsoft's shiny new operating system. Visit any computer shop, uh, except Apple centers obviously, and you'll be bombarded with hoardings and posters inviting you to upgrade to Vista and enjoy a brave new world. The wow is now, its makers claim, but for many PC users who have actually upgraded to Vista, that exuberant wow seems to have turned into an exasperating how. Within days of its release, the internet was awash with horror stories. Hardware running slower than usual, system crashes, and incompatibilities with everything from printers to webcams. Even Apple had to issue a statement warning that its popular iTunes software and Windows Vista were a marriage made in hell, together capable of corrupting your beloved iPod. But despite the bad press, I've decided to jump in at the deep end. I'm going to upgrade the Bentley family PC to Vista regardless. And the first thing I've done is I've gone to the Microsoft website and downloaded a program called Windows Vista Upgrade Advisor. It's a program that takes a look at your computer's hardware, particularly how much RAM it's got, how fast the processor is, and it uh, tells you whether it's capable of running Vista. Well, the good news is that it says it can run Vista. The slightly disappointing news is that it's recommending Vista Home Basic, whereas I thought my computer was good enough to run Home Premium. The Upgrade Advisor looked at all the hardware and software I was running and gave me an idea of problems I might encounter during the installation. For one, I was lacking a Vista driver for my Nikon film scanner and possibly one for my sound card too. Mm -hmm. oh. There might also be some compatibility problems with my firewall zone alarm. They're not compatible with Vista just yet. And bizarrely, Microsoft's own Windows Messenger program. A bit disconcerting, but I hoped updates would be available online. 45 minutes and 10 downloads later, I was ready to go. I made the choice to install Vista Premium, despite what the Upgrade Advisor told me, on the grounds that my computer matched all the system requirements. I hoped it was a decision I wouldn't live to regret. OK, goodbye, dull, boring XP. Hello, Vista. OK, Mr Gates, I'm ready to be wowed. Now, anyone who's ever installed a new operating system on their PC will know that once you've popped the disk in, you're in for a bit of a wait. Several hours, in this case. Ich habe es heilig! Ooh, it's finished. Can't wait to see what we've got. Right, well, I've clicked start, and it appears to have frozen, which uh, isn't a good start. <laughs> oh, one hour and 20 minutes for this. <laughs> what I ask you to remember is that this is my home PC, the only one my family has to use. I've no safety net and no backups. If this computer stops working, I'm well and truly stuffed. It is, it is spinning, I think. It had obviously all gone wrong. I'd killed my PC. That's the Vista. And we're just looking at it. Ah! Whew. That is a relief. That is a relief. <laughs> I was only 30 seconds away there from pressing reset. Ah, no, it's all happening. After an hour and 40 minutes doing nothing, I've, everything seems to have happened all at once. The sense of relief was extraordinary. At that moment, I couldn't care less about how clever or inventive Vista was. I was just totally and utterly relieved I had a computer that worked again. Keyboard, mouse and monitor were fine. I've got sound. That was supposed to cause me problems, but it didn't. It seems pretty good. My DVDs seem to be playing through the new Windows Media Center interface. Even my venerable Nikon film scanner works. Now that is a relief. Is the internet happening? Yes. So that's good. Oh, John, I was holding my breath for you there. Yes, I was expecting the worst. Yes, but it came on. 
Yeah. And you've been using it all week. Now, have yep. there been any bugs or bug bears indeed? Well, happily, there have been no hardware issues. Though I was a bit disappointed on the software front. Some of my favourite bits of software don't actually quite work under Vista, particularly here. There's a video editing program I like. And I even had a few disappointments with Microsoft's own program, Word 2003, which is supposed to be wholly compatible. Really? Hmm. So, what about as an upgrade? Would you recommend it? Absolutely not. That's quite categoric, isn't it? Because it is very expensive. And also, um, I think there's bound to be something in your computer system, whether it's hardware or software, that isn't compatible. And why subject yourself to that trouble? You'd be far better off to put that money aside and spend Wait. it on your, on your new computer, which will come with Vista anyway. And as an overall kind of view of Vista, then, is it, is it a negative or is it a positive? Actually, it's quite positive. I mean, it is better than XP in a number of ways. It's got a much better search function, which XP was always very slow at. It's actually quite attractive to look at, not mm. quite as attractive as uh, Mac OS X, perhaps, but uh, it is an improvement. So um, it's probably worth having eventually, by which time they've probably sorted out quite a few of the bugs. Mm. I search for the best way to stay logged on when you're away from your desktop. I use one oh piece my of... Oh, we're in! <laughs> oh, my God, hang on. <laughs> Let me get the propeller down. That is amazing! 